Hello and welcome. Thanks for checking out our 0.5.0 release of Onivim. A lot of new features and functionality in this build. The biggest change in 0.5.0 is our VS Code extension compatibility. We've upgraded our extension host, revamped the way we talk to the VS Code backend. What this means is that more VS Code extensions just work with Onivim. I just have one extension installed right now, a theme extension called Searchlight. Let's get another one. If our new default theme isn't quite cyberpunk enough for you, there's a theme called cyberpunk. Let's try it out. Once you install a theme, it'll automatically load, and if there are multiple themes bundled in the extension, it'll ask you to pick one. Not bad, but maybe a little too cyberpunk for me. I'll clear out the search bar to go back to my installed extensions. From the extension details view, we can also set the theme if it's available. All right, this is pretty nice. I like it. And you can always jump back into the theme picker um, to pick a different one or a bundled theme. So I'll go back to our default, laser wave italic. Now let's get set up for some languages. I'm gonna install the Python, the C Clang D extension, and the C Sharp extension. All right, almost there. I'm using sneak mode with Control G to press the install button. All right, we have these all installed, the C-sharp extension, the Clang-D extension, and the Python extension. Note that the extensions mention that restarting the editor is required. In the future, I'd like to remove this requirement, but that'll have to come later. Let's close the editor so that we can get these activated. An important point is that these extensions aren't actually from the VS Code extension marketplace, as it is proprietary, but we're using a service called OpenVSX which is built by the Eclipse Foundation, and it's a free and open alternative repository of VS Code extensions. I've even uploaded a CTAGS extension to use with Onivim. Let's jump back into the editor. Right now, since we don't support multi-root workspaces, the language support tends to work best if you open the editor from your project directory. Python support needs a virtual env running, so I'll activate that, and then open Onivim from this directory. I'll check my Python version, just to make sure my virtual env is picked up. I'll open up a Python file. The first time I load the Python extension, it'll ask me what linner I want to use. I can select PyLint, or I can pick one from a list, so I'm going to check out and see the options it gives me. A lot of choices here. I think I'll stick with PyLint. Note the status bar entry at the bottom that shows the virtual environment the Python extension picked up. This means that I get my full set of language features. I can use GH to open the hover. I can use GD to go to definition. So I just jumped from uh, the usage of f to the definition. And then in insert mode, I get nice completion, as well as some signature help. So we had an intern for the summer, Zach, and he implemented the UI for hover, for signature help, as well as a markdown renderer in Reverie to support all this. Really awesome work. Thanks for all your help, Zach. Let's deactivate the virtual app now and flip over to a C project and check out the Clang D extension. I'm really excited about this extension and excited about putting it to work next milestone on LibVim. So let's jump into that project and see it in action. I'm gonna open up the X commands file. Now Clang D works best if you set up a compile commands JSON, which I haven't done, but it's amazing how much it picks up even without that. 
These squiggles are because it doesn't know where my include file paths are. I'm going to jump to the bottom of this file and play around with completion a bit. So again, I get nice, rich contextual completion. And I also get a great hover experience. The C Sharp extension is also really nice. Let's jump in. I have a C Sharp console app project. The first time you run, it'll prompt you to install dependencies and help you get everything set up. So I just use sneak mode to press the install button. It gives a nice status bar indication that the server is running. And C Sharp projects sometimes have multiple sub projects, so the status bar actually lets us choose a particular project. And as before with the other languages, you get great completion, signature help, uh, go to definition. There's also some small UI improvements that made it in. We show a subtle shadow effect when scrolled. Smooth scroll is now turned on by default. There are various Unicode fixes across the board. And we support bold and italic fonts in the editor surface. Now being a very small team with a very big project, prioritization is so important. So I want to thank everyone who's logged issues and helped us vote with the thumbs up button. As we don't collect any telemetry, this is our way of getting a pulse on what we need to do next. And it's pretty clear what we need to do for this 0.6.0 .0 .0 milestone. Fully embracing and supporting Vim through libvim, uh, from loading VimL configuration and plugins to a fully navigable Vim style UI, not just the sneak integration, uh, tab support, so we're going to pivot from the extension support for this next milestone and focus primarily on those points. I'm working on distilling the feedback into actionable items and coming up with a plan for this next 0.6.0 .0 milestone. So that's the major focus now, and in my eyes, it's the last major technical blocker to delivering on our vision. So it's really exciting to get the chance to work on this next. And as before, we'll continue to work on bug fixes, daily editor blockers, and maybe take some opportunistic uh, fixes for the language server and language integration, but the Vim support, leveling that up is really the next priority. Next month is the virtual Vim conference. I'll be giving a talk on OniVim, so I hope you can check it out. There's a lot of great speakers and talks planned, so I'm really excited about it. I want to thank our team that helped implement features in the release, Zach and Ryan, as well as everyone who's pre-ordered or supported the project on Patreon. It's a really ambitious project, and we would not be this far without all of your help. So thank you. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you later.